Hey, my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart. I hope you're eager to continue your learning journey to mastering Fabric Analytics Engineer TP600 certificate. In this video, I'm going to show you what are field parameters in Power BI and how you can level up your Power BI ga uh, game by using this fantastic feature. Stay tuned. First, one important disclaimer before we jump into the action. Field parameters as of today, so uh, February of 2024, is still a preview feature. That means don't be surprised if you open Power BI Desktop and you don't see an option to use field parameters. You first need to enable this feature from options and settings, then going to options and then preview features. So now we can really start with the action. So in dark ages of Power BI, uh, if you wanted to dynamically switch the axis uh, of the visual, for example, between the products and countries, let's say, you had to write, I like to call this exotic DAX code, applying various tricks and uh, uh, techniques using three test function, as I will show you soon. Or maybe it's a good idea that I show you immediately. So I'll go to my Power BI desktop and what I have here, first of all, I had to create uh, a table, DAX calculated table, that contains uh, all the values from, let me show you and zoom it a little bit. So that contains all the values from uh, brands, so brand name column from product table and countries from uh, geography table. And I'm then using cross join to create basically a Cartesian product of all the values and putting them into one table, which I called brands and countries. And then here you see in this uh, visual down below, I'm using a measure called sales amount tree test, which is, let me show you a little bit uh, quickly how, how it looks like. So you see, this is why I call this exotic DAX. So essentially uh, we are using a bunch of different DAX uh, uh, functions in this example, uh, just to be able to achieve a very common uh, requirement from business users to switch dynamically uh, between different attributes on the axis. So uh, in this case, because uh, countries and brands are not uh, uh, connected with physical relationship, with three tests, we are creating essentially uh, a virtual relationship. Okay, so what is this, uh, uh, what this uh, slicer can do now? In this case, when we use brands, uh, when we click on brands, then brands are displayed as, uh, uh, as an attribute on the visual. When I select countries, then it shows countries. That was one use case. The, uh, the, uh, the other use case, very, very common use case is, I call it switch like a pro. So essentially it's uh, the situation where uh, you have to provide your user with the possibility to dynamically switch between different measures within the visual. Let's say that we have a measure sales amount and sales amount year to date. And essentially we want to enable a user uh, that uh, when he, she or he clicks on the slicer, they see uh, this selected measure displayed in a visual. So uh, previously we had to do another hack here. So for example, I will go to enter data and create one helper table, which will, which I will call selected time frame. And then I'll just have two columns, ID and the other column will be uh, time frame and then in this case I want to switch only between two possible values so this one will be sales and this one will be sales year to date okay I will now load this helper table into my Power BI report let's wait for a few moments and it's loaded now I need to write some additional measures so first of all I will create a new measure here to capture the user selection. This one I will call selected uh, measure. And this one equals minimum of ID value from our newly created table. And one final measure that we will use in our matrix visual here is to basically switch between the values that user selected in the slicer. First of all, I need to put a slicer. So here is my slicer. I have sales and sales year to date. That's what we want to display 
individual and finally let's create a new measure let's do it here and in this case i will call this one sales selected and it equals so i want to use a, a switch function to leverage the switch function and then i'll say switch and then i'll say what is selected measure and based on selected measure if it's one i want to return sales amount if it's two i want to return sales amount year to date closing switch and just for the sake of proper naming we don't want to reference our measures together with table names so i will just do this for the sake of proper uh, naming conventions and here i will now use this uh, sales selected measure as you see by default it will show total sales amount let me just uh, expand this a little bit and then if i click on sales year to date you see that the value changes here to show me the uh, total value for the selected year for year to date here 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 that's how we did it before field parameters as i said in dark ages of uh, power bi and this is why i consider field parameters as a game changer so because these two examples best illustrate how important was the report uh, request from the report consumer side to have the possibility to dynamically change the way the data is displayed and that's where field parameters uh, come to the rescue many times we heard these uh, 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 words uh, game changer and uh, some of those features that were labeled as game changers live to their expectations some not reasons are different of course but uh, let's be honest and say that with field parameters i'm pretty sure uh, not just because they eliminate the the necessity of applying various workarounds they are really 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 a game changer in terms of power bi because they open a whole new world of uh, possibilities not just from data visualization perspective but also and what is even more important in my opinion from a data modeling point of view i'll show you a few demos and you will understand what i'm talking about but before we are able to get the maximum from field parameters we need we need to make ourselves familiar with this new kid on the block right so let's see what are field parameters and what happens behind the scenes once you start using this feature in a nutshell field parameters enables you to perform uh, two essential actions first one is dynamically change the attribute uh, for slicing and dicing the data in the visual meaning dynamically switch between different columns that's uh, the first demo i show you with three tests i will show you how it's done with field, field parameters and the other one is dynamically change the metrics displayed in the visual meaning dynamically switch between different measures i hear you i hear you nicola we could have done this before field parameters as well yes that's true and i show you how but instead of three test complexity or writing complex and verbose switch statements index you can now set everything up in literally a few clicks and without writing a single line of dax code so let me show you on previous two examples how field parameters can save significant portion of your time and effort so i'll go back here to my power bi desktop and this one this page looks exactly the same like in the previous case and uh, now instead of using these three tests and uh, uh, using helper tables and writing switch statements i will show you how it's super easy to achieve the same behavior with field parameters so i'll go to modeling new parameter and then i'll select fields parameter let's call this one uh three tests uh savior and what are we using we are using brand name from our product table and we are using our uh, region country name from our geography table i want to keep this option to add slicer to my page i'll hit create and what happens now two things two crucial things one is that power bi automatically created slicer because we wanted to do that and here on the right hand side you can see a new table which is called three test savior 
and those two values brand name and region country name are inside now what happens here if instead of brand name i put this on my axis and you see now i can just click here and easy uh, like a charm i can switch between different attributes in previous case we had to create a new table with cartesian product a complex dax measure with a three test function in this case it's just simple as adding field parameter and then switching between different attributes here another one that i want to show you let's create a new one so again i go to modeling uh, new parameter fields let's call this one uh, switch savior and in this case i want to uh, use my measures uh, in the field parameter so you're not limited just to columns you can also use measures in field parameters so i think we had sales amount till sales amount year to date Again, I will keep this option as slicer to this page. And let's see what happens here. Again, we have a slicer with our two possible values. Here uh, on the values field, I will use switch savior. And now when I click on sales amount, I see sales amount. When I click on sales amount year to date, it calculates sales amount year to date. It's just easy as that. Really, it's easy as that. So field parameters, a huge lifesaver in those very, very common uh, business scenarios and uh, business requests. Now I want to go back a little bit more and explain uh, what happens under the hood of field parameters once you create them. So you saw how to create them in Power BI Desktop. Now I want to show you what happens under the hood. So once you drag the columns and or measures in the field parameters window, Power BI will automatically create a new table in your data model. Uh, those are two tables that I show you, switch savior and uh, three test savior. You may also choose to create, automatically create a slicer, which contains values from the field parameter uh, and put that slicer on the report page. This table that you create consists of three built-in columns. Uh, one is visible to an end user, while remaining two are hidden by default. So the first one, the name of the column that's going to be displayed in the slicer, that's the label which is exposed to a consumer. You can change the name of this column later without need to change the whole logic in the background. I will show you in Power BI Desktop. Uh, this is possible because of the second column we have in our field parameters table, which is called fields. And this column leverages uh, a DAX function name of. Name of function returns the fully qualified name of the model object. Why is this important? Uh, let's say that you want to change the column name from uh, uh, brand name to brand. Uh, you can do that without violating the whole field parameter structure because the name of function will still return the new uh, name of the object. Displayed name stays unchanged, but it will refer to an underlying object with a different name. Uh, the third column we have is numeric one and it co it's called order and represents the order of the elements within field parameters starting from zero. So these three are provided out of the box once you create field parameters. However, as this is nothing else but a table, uh, you can also manually extend this table with additional columns. If you're wondering why this may be interesting, let me show you a quick demo uh, where uh, you can you can see what can be done with field parameters and in one of the next videos I will show you an even more advanced example of how to dynamically filter visuals by using field parameters. In this case, uh, yeah, let me create a new one and essentially let's go here and again we have the same uh, uh, look and feel of the page. I'll go to modeling, new parameter, fields and let's create let's call this one uh yeah grouping grouping and let's take some fields from our date table so i'll take for example year and month name then for example from geography i'll take uh, region country name and continent name and let's take something from product let's say brand name and for example, class name. Again, I will keep this option to add slicer to, to a report page. 
And as I told you, this is nothing else but the table. Here is the table definition. So you see the first column is name. Then we have this name of function that I already explained. And finally, we have just the, the uh, ordinal number of uh, each of these uh, uh, fields in field parameters table. So I can manually extend basically this. And let's say that I want to group all of my uh, time related attributes to a group called uh, calendar. I'll just copy and paste this to the next one. And then let's call, let's put for geography. I'll call this one geography. Again, I'll copy this and paste it here. And finally for product, let's call this one product group. Keep it simple and understandable. So now I will click commit and what will happen? We will have a new column created in our field parameters table. I will rename this column let's say group uh let's call it group and now what i can do i can put this group column in my slicer and now all of my field parameters are grouped based on their uh, uh higher level of the hierarchy so basically when i have calendar it's year and month name belong to calendar here and let me show you how it works here just to make a full sense so instead of brand name i want to say grouping and in this case i have year in this case i have month name in this case i have for example continent and all of my field parameters are grouped together so brand name class name and so on as i said you can also change the name of uh, this one let's say i don't want this uh, awful region country name so i just want to call this one country it will still point to the same underlying object. This one is called, for example, continent. And let's leave it like this. So nothing breaks in the background. Now we have country and continent displayed instead of this region country name and so on. So essentially, this is how field parameters work. There are literally uh, uh, dozens of use cases where you can leverage field parameters in your Power BI reports. As I said, this was just a basic example. In one of the next videos, I'll show you how to dynamically filter values uh, and columns in your uh, Power BI visuals by leveraging field parameters. One more thing that I need to tell you before uh, we wrap up this one, considerations and limitations. Essentially, that's one of the most important things to keep in mind. Uh, because yes, we are all super excited about field parameters and thinking about all this number of use cases that we can use them. However, there are certain limitations, at least at this moment, and considerations to be aware of. Uh, the first question that pops up is regarding the uh, performance. And I will immediately tell you that there is no performance difference between using field parameters and regular columns. Because once the Power BI retrieves the list of the columns from field parameters table, it will use, it will basically substitute them, them and use regular columns in the query. Uh, so there is no performance difference, but uh, the main limitation is using analyze in Excel feature. At this point in time, you can forget about uh, taking advantage of field parameters feature uh, with analyze in Excel feature. And uh, because Excel uses MDX to populate pivot tables, it's not even aware of field parameters. This is, I would say, currently the biggest limitation of field parameters. Additionally, you can't use them uh, 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 to, uh, as linked fields to drill through uh, or, or tooltip page. And the workaround is then to use some individual fields which are referenced within the field parameter instead. Uh, that was it for this video and i hope you enjoyed it and that uh, yeah you are excited about field parameters and uh, that you will find many many use cases for uh, this amazing feature uh, stay tuned and happy learning and good luck with your dp600 exam see you soon